In this video, we're going to look at how we can use Virtuoso for functional UI and integration testing of Dynamics 365. In previous videos, we've already looked at how to use natural language to create functional UI steps against various elements. But now what we're going to look at is how you can also incorporate API calls into that. And a good use case for this could be as part of your functional UI testing, you want to make API calls to be able to create or get data from your Dynamics 365 or other browser-based applications to be able to have data to use in your tests. And to do that, you can do things like, as you can see here, you can incorporate in, for instance, a token API call to generate a token. Then in sequence, then I could make uh, an API call to, in this case, get account details using that token that I have created. So what we've already got in the test pack that you can load into Virtuoso for Dynamics 365, we've already got pre-created some API calls. So for instance, an access token call, get accounts or create account. Now the first one is gonna be your access token. Everybody for your, any Dynamics 365 instance or module will need to get an access token to authenticate API calls. So to do that, you actually need in the environment manager, so an environment and in your environment that you've set up, or we've got one pre-created that you can load in, there are five different data points or variables that you need to input. Now, you may already have these if you talk to your Dynamics 365 administrator. Otherwise, there are lots of guides online about how to create an app and also create an application user. And what you'll be able to find are your service root URL, client ID and client secret, tenant ID, and your resource. So I'm gonna go ahead and input those details into my instance. So for instance, I'm gonna input my service root URL, and I'm gonna put in my client ID and client secret. I'm gonna put in my tenant ID. And I'm gonna put in also the resource, which is typically the base URL, URL of your Dynamics 365 instance. So again, you should either be able to get these from your system administrator or else they can be set up by an admin. Again, there are lots of guides online how to do that. So with that done, basically those variables can now be called in to the API calls. So you'll see here how the API call uses these data inputs which come from the variables, which will come from the environment. And basically this is all pre-set up to be able to make a call to get your token. Now then, the only other thing to know about API calls are that when you do make the call, you can then store the response into a variable. So I wanna get the token. If I just click on send here, it will make an API call so we can test it. And this is just more for the setup and I can see that it returns response.data.access token. This is actually my token that I can use for authenticating further API calls. Now the point here isn't to use this screen to be able to you know, actually test APIs or use them. This is really just for building your API calls. And here you could see I could come in and I could clone a request. I could make a new request and set that up from scratch. I could even import an existing collection if I wanted to. But with these set up, then in my journey, if I come back over here into my Dynamics 365 cells and working with APIs, if I now run this, it's really easy to then be able to incorporate API calls. And what I kind of recommend doing is to put in a comment as to what the API call is going to actually be doing. So for instance, telling somebody that this API obtains an access token to authenticate subsequent API calls. But otherwise really, I'll show you in a second after this runs, just how easy it is to be able to uh, create uh, a new uh, step with an existing API call. Okay, so we can see here that we're about to make the token call that will run. So basically it's gonna call the API using those various inputs from the environment to be able to authenticate. And we'll see that if I click on that, in the side effects, it stored the token for me because that's what I wanted to return. And then of course, in my next API call, which is to get accounts, then it's using that token, which I generated 
to be able to make that call. And in this case, this is a call to be able to get accounts and it's set up to get the top three accounts, basically the, from the uh, uh, Dynamics 365 instance that we're, we're calling into. So in this case, you can see it's gone ahead and now it's gonna return that data. So you can see it's actually in the response, it's returning me the top three accounts in this case. Now, as noted here in this comment, there is good documentation, of course, from Microsoft, and the link to this is in the um, description of this YouTube video. And it basically shows you how to actually use the Dynamics 365 web API to be able to create various uh, data records. And that's common across all the Dynamics 365 uh, modules. But if we just come back over to the journey, we can see that we've created an account. But then what we can do, you can see that if I want to combine this now with functional UI, so what I'm actually doing is getting a token to authenticate creating uh, an, a call to get accounts, which I return into the response. Then what I can do is when I jump into the UI, I might say, well, I wanna take this record here, the first account, the name of it, to be able to write into the interface. So in this case, I can come in and say, go to my work, click on accounts, and then I want to write the response from the API call, and I'm gonna choose the first array and the name to then be able to write that, as you can see, into the search field here. So I'm using the API data to drive my functional UI testing, and then be able to click and open uh, that particular account. So it's just showing you how this is actually the intention is to combine UI with API calls, particularly for test data. And then finally in this step here, what I'm doing is I'm then combining, passing in basically test data. So I'm randomly generating an account name, which I'm then gonna pass into the API call. And that's actually set up here. So you can see I'm passing in the account name as part of the inputs to the API call. So that then I can create my API account, and you can see that's been uh, created because I got a 201 response and it tells me the name that I've just generated and account's been created for them. So now again, I can come in, go into the UI after creating accounts uh, and then search for that. So response.data.name, there's my, the name from the API call and basically again, go through and, and open that. So it's a basic example and really all you're doing for that if I just say API example. So I just need to write API, click on get accounts, put two brackets and this is if I wanted to map in other inputs, otherwise I'm, I'm just gonna leave that blank. Just gonna have brackets and then returning response. And when I click on save, that will run my API call using the API as it's been set up just here which again passes in various details. And then you can see again, that's made the call, it gets my account details and returns them in the response, which I can see in the side effects. And just to show you then how you can use that response data, I'm just gonna assert this. So I could assert that dollar response dot data, because I wanna look in the data section dot value. And note how this is an array with three different sets of values. So I'm gonna say, I wanna use the first one, which is square brackets zero dot name contains fourth, for example. And we can see that then I've just gone and performed an assertion against the API data and an expected value. And you can see just how you can map through the data in the response. So I could use that for an assertion. I could use it as we've done up here to be able to write into a form field. Again, it just shows you how you can combine the API and the um, responses together with your functional UI testing. And again, there's uh, documentation. We'll put the link into the YouTube video description of basically how to work with the various APIs, but you may also be familiar with this.